The Infant Update and Growing Together Expansion Pack are coming to The Sims 4 so soon, and I think I speak for many of us when I say next week can't come soon enough. So as we all impatiently wait for these new family gameplay features, I figured I'd do something productive and create a limited pack daycare with what's already in the game. So if you are also sick of waiting for more gameplay for your little ones, this Little Sprouts daycare lot is a great place to bring your sims for a fun family outing. I jumped ahead in the speed building process because it took me a while to work out the overall shape and placement of everything for this shell. It's a bit of a unique shape for a daycare, so let me explain the layout. This daycare is in sort of an S shape, and each curved section has three buildings that wrap around a circular play space. The front portion will mainly be for toddlers, and the back will be for kids. Each age group will have their own activity room, snack room, and playground. The larger rooms at the center of each curve section are shared spaces for all the age groups. The front one will be the nap room, and the back will be the bathroom. I made sure to also include a couple of bassinets and activities for older sims as well, so the whole family can spend the day together here. I wanted to make this community lot more accessible by limiting the packs I use in it to ones that many players may have, plus a few of the family focused ones. So I tried to just use items from base game, seasons, parenthood, kid stuff, and toddler stuff. Unfortunately, filters in build mode reset all the time, so I ended up unintentionally using a couple of items from other packs. I didn't realize this until I uploaded the build to the gallery. The few items from other packs that did slip in were kind of key pieces where I used them, plus I was feeling kind of lazy after making this huge build, so I left them in. I'll be sure to point out the few items I accidentally used as we come across them, the vast majority of this build is just those few packs though, so you should be able to download this lot without missing out on much. Wrapping around the buildings and playgrounds is this central walkway. I got the idea for this segmented curved daycare from a few building concept images I found on Pinterest of similarly shaped childcare center designs set in Africa. Since I built this in Newcrest though, which is definitely not as warm and dry, I made sure to make the walkways covered instead of the open ones that the design concepts had. This will help shield your sims from the elements a bit, but this build could also be right at home placed in Oasis Springs instead. For the color scheme, I wanted these buildings to be colorful, but in a slightly muted way with lots of light natural wood. Sort of like a nice Montessori daycare or something. The outside color of each building also ties into their interior, as I made that the main color for the inside as well. You'll also notice that some of the windows are placed a bit low in the rooms. I put them lower to be at a height that's more appropriate for the age group who'd be in that room. So the toddler rooms have their windows extra low so that they can look out of them more easily, and the kids' rooms have their windows slightly higher up than that. This is also a really fun thing to do with your windows in rooms that are designed for your sim's pets. I'm going to have to remember to put a doggy door with a little window at pet height in the next home I build with pets in it. That would be such a cute thing to do. Moving inside to the first shared space, we have the nap room. It took me so long to sort out the layout of this room, so I skipped ahead a bit. I put two bunk beds in here that have toddler beds on the bottom. I wanted to dress up these beds a bit, so I hung these sheer curtains off the sides of the top bunks. The curtains will snap to walls, so in order to do this, you have to delete nearby walls so that you can freely place the curtains, then put the walls back afterwards. I did test these and both beds can still be used. So this is a cute way to make your bunks feel a little more special for your kids and toddlers. On the far wall, I made a little nook for the bassinets and hung up some more curtains. This makes it look like you could potentially close off this area when the babies are sleeping to make it darker and quieter for them.
The front of the room I made into a quiet little reading area. This would be a good spot to read a bedtime story to the kids to help them wind down and get ready for nap time. This would probably be one of the adults' favorite rooms because it'd be so much more calm and quiet compared to the rest of this lot. I actually used to be a nanny and daycare worker, so I can attest to stories and nap time being one of the best parts of the day. I'm an educator at heart and by trade, so my favorite things to give kids are books. Not exciting, but everyone could always use more books. Getting kids toys is just more mess for them to make and have to clean up and store. Besides getting to read books, which are great, story time and nap time mean you can finally get a brief moment of peace and a respite from the chaos of the rest of the day. So yeah, as an introvert who cherishes my quiet time, this would be my safe space to hide out and take frequent breaks in. Kids are great, but they are so much chaos and wear me out. The other shared building is the bathroom. I wanted this room to be functional for all ages, so along with regular toilets, I also put in some toddler potties and a little changing station. This doesn't actually function, but it looks the part. If you end up getting the new Growing Together expansion pack, you could definitely swap this out for one of the new changing table objects that pack will come with. I'm probably not going to be buying the pack right away though, and will most likely wait until it goes on sale or it can be bundled with other packs. So for anyone else in the same boat and who will be longingly watching all the other simmers playing with the new pack from the outside, we can at least pretend we have that gameplay with this decorative changing table. It's always good to have a bathtub on lots where you're bringing toddlers, so I made sure to add in one here. Speaking of functionality, I sized down that bar stool and put it by the sinks to act like a sort of step stool thing for the kids to use when washing their hands. It doesn't actually function, but it's a realistic decorative touch and I think it's a cute addition. The first playroom is for the toddler age group. This is also the first spot I unintentionally used something from a different pack from the ones that I was originally trying to limit myself to. So that dollhouse is from Eco Lifestyle. I thought I had the pack filters on so it didn't even register that that toy was from a different pack even though I know it is. I was going for a sort of eco Montessori vibe for this daycare, so this upcycled dollhouse was so perfect for this build that when I realized what I did after I put it on the gallery, I just decided to leave it. You could easily replace it with a different dollhouse though if you don't have that pack. This room isn't huge, so I did size down that dollhouse one time. Since the sims don't interact directly with that object and just play in front of it, resizing it doesn't mess up the functionality. So this is a good trick to do when you don't have room for one of those huge dollhouses or you just want more realistic and regionally sized versions. Originally, I wanted to do two versions of this lot. One that was just base game and then the other where I edited it to add in items from parenthood, toddler stuff, and kids room stuff. When I looked at the lack of items we have in base game for kids and toddlers though, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. There's no playground equipment for toddlers and no special activity objects or fun toys for toddlers in base game. Plus, the only swings that kids can use all come in packs that you have to pay for. So this lot would have been so empty if I did a version with no additional packs, so I dropped that plan. We desperately need more objects for toddlers and kids in base game. I'd love a swing set that has both a standard swing for kids to use, as well as one of those little toddler seat swings. A toddler slide and a kid slide would also be amazing additions. I would have hoped that this new base game update would bring some of these things for younger sims to the game, but I haven't heard of anything like that coming in the update. I'll keep my fingers crossed for an SDX drop that has some more of these things for toddlers and kids, but I'm not holding my breath. I really struggled with the color scheme for this playroom. 
Initially we had this teal thing going on, but eventually I end up scrapping that. Once I found this rug from Toddler Stuff with the nature pattern on it, I decided to make that my focal piece and match everything else to it. So I leaned more into the fall themed greens, yellows, and oranges, then everything finally started coming together. I love this little nature themed reading nook with the leaf garland over the windows. This looks like a fun place to sprawl out in a sunny spot with your snacks and read a bunch of books. This other side I made into an arts and crafts corner. Your toddlers don't actually make crafts at these activity tables, but it looks like they could. So I put up a bunch of these decorative crafts on the walls to play into that. almost nothing slots to the shelves in this game, so I have this CC red shelf to help me place items at custom heights. It's the OMSP wall shelf by Amiibe, and I use it all the time. It's a great CC object that you use by placing it at the height of the shelf or table you want to put something on, place your items on the red shelf, then drag them off to where you want them to be on the other surface. It's not a script mod, so it doesn't break with every game update, which is super convenient. I'll put a link in the video description in case you want to download it for your game too. You'll also notice me grabbing debug items to use in this build, like those clay sculptures I put on the shelves here. To make this process easier, I used Twisted Mexi's Better Build By mod, which, among other things, organizes all the debug items so they're so much easier to find in the catalog and use. This is a script mod, but it is so essential that I think it's totally worth it for me to keep this mod updated. I pretty much refuse to build without it in my game. Again, a link to it will be in the video description. This yellow room is the toddler snack area. We don't have a toddler sized dining table and chairs that they can eat at, and feeding them in high chairs is a pain in the ass, so I sized down this coffee table and put a couple of kid chairs on either side to look like a mini dining area for them. The front half is the food prep area. It's nothing fancy, just a fridge and some counters for the adults to prep their snacks and lunches at. This room is on a diagonal, so the counters have some weird shadowing on the backsplashes, but we'll just ignore that. Speaking of snack time, when I used to be a babysitter and a nanny, I remember snagging some goldfish crackers for myself to munch on anytime the kids had some. I don't know why, but those things are so addictive to me. Not even any of the special flavors, I just like the plain cheddar ones. I could eat like a whole bag of those things in one sitting. I don't even have any kids and my niece and nephew don't live close enough to visit, but I still buy them for myself as an adult. I also love a good juice box and used to get them for myself in college. If all that extra packaging weren't so wasteful, I'd probably still keep them stocked in my house. What are some of your favorite snacks that are traditionally thought of as just for kids that you still enjoy, even though you're outside that age range now? Give me all of your snack recommendations in the comments. Next is the playroom for the child age group. There are more activity options for kids, so I wanted to include a bunch of them here that maybe you wouldn't have on your Sims home lot. 
So besides those ubiquitous craft tables, I also put in a mini science lab and that puppet theater from Kids Room Stuff. This puppet show object is really cute, but it's just not something you usually fit into most residential builds, so I was sure to make room for it here. The additions of the infant life stage and new family dynamics has got me thinking about some of the activities I'd like to see added into the game next. I'd love more things for kids and toddlers to do. What comes to mind first for me would be a toy oven, dress up station, and sandbox like what we had in The Sims 3. Having game interactions the whole family could play together would also be great, like tag, ring around the rosy, and patty cake. Despite wanting to see more, I'm feeling slightly more optimistic about the new things coming to the game next week than I was in my last build where I made three hard mode 100 baby challenge lots. If you want to hear my thoughts on infants versus babies, I'll link that video here. Even though I am hopeful, it's still The Sims 4 so I'm keeping my expectations low. We all know their track record for hyping things up just for them to be a letdown when released. How are you feeling about the new infant update and growing together expansion pack? Are you excited? Nervous? Do you think they'll actually deliver on the promises they're making? Let me know. Alright, back to the build. I'm finishing up adding some decor to this arts and crafts section at the back here. I did do some more off camera to this area as well as the kids snack room but we'll take a closer look at those in the tour at the end. Moving outside, the first area we're working on out here is the toddler's playground. The main feature is this huge jungle gym we got in the toddler stuff pack. This thing is really neat, but it is definitely something you would only find at a park or indoor play gym. I wish we had more play equipment for toddlers that would fit into a regular backyard. But hey, if your sims don't want to go over the top with this stuff in their own yard, they can come here for a day out with their toddlers instead. The second item I unintentionally used that's outside my initial pack restrictions is out here, and that's the playhouse thing from Dream Home Decorator. I totally forgot this isn't base game and initially couldn't think of a unique toddler friendly activity to replace it with when I realized my mistake after uploading the lot. Thinking about it now though, you could probably replace it with the little slide that came in the toddler stuff pack if you don't have Dream Home Decorator. This other playground is for the kids. They've got swings, monkey bars, and a giant pirate ship back here. This looks like a pretty fun place to play. I wish I had a park this cool with all this play equipment when I was growing up. Since this playground is right near a road, I was sure to fence it in. I like the idea of a hedge fence, but the ones in build mode are a bit too manicured for my liking, and using debug hedges wouldn't act as true barriers. So I ended up combining them. I fenced in the playgrounds with that hedge fence, then lined the whole thing with some bushes from debug. This way I get the functionality of a real fence with a more natural, unkempt look of the debug hedges. For the rest of the landscaping, I wanted it to look more natural and a little overgrown. I imagine this daycare is like the spot for all the eco-conscious parents to bring their kids, so the landscaping would incorporate lots of native plants and be a little more wild looking with plenty of trees everywhere. 
I used mostly debug landscaping for this as there are lots of great grasses and really bushy plants in there. So that Better Build By mod came in really handy here. It groups all the debug plants in the different landscaping categories that they belong in and allows you to use that eyedropper tool to duplicate items too. Yeah, that mod is super helpful when landscaping especially. I kept the plants and flowers quite neutral. I wanted the colors of the buildings to be the main focal points and not have a bunch of colorful flowers competing with those. This whole build is meant to be colorful but in a subdued way and keeping the landscaping naturalistic and neutral definitely helps with that. But yeah, I'm just going through and doing all the landscaping and final touches at the end here. So let's go ahead and jump into live mode so we can take a look at how everything turned out. Here we are in live mode at the Little Sprouts daycare. I brought one of my sim families here to mill around so we can get a look at this place in action. They're on the gallery too if you want to download them as well. So we're on the Avarice Acres lot in Newcrest. I made this a park so there should be plenty of people showing up whenever you bring your sims here. Going through the front entrance, we have the toddler's playground. They have tons to do out here. I even included a little kiddie pool under this canopy area. I put a couple of clay balls over here too so that you can pretend like your kids are playing in the mud by the kiddie pool. Back here, I put a water balloon bucket next to a couple of planters with edible plants in them. This is definitely the type of daycare that would grow their own produce for the kids. The playhouse is over there. If you don't have Dream Home Decorator, feel free to replace it with something else like a little slide or a blarfy or something. On the walkway, there's a little music area and a telescope so your older sims can come work on some skills while they're here with the kids. Moving inside, the first room we have is the toddler's playroom. It is very much nature themed in here with all the leaf crafts and fall tree decals on the walls. That dollhouse is just too perfect in here so I left it, but you can swap it out for a different one if you don't have Eagle Lifestyle. That is one of my favorite packs though, so if you're looking to get a new one, I definitely recommend Eco Lifestyle. I really love this reading nook and arts and crafts area. It's just such a fun and inviting space. All right, let's move on to the next room. This blue building is the nap room and the first half of it is for story time. There are plenty of books to choose from and a couple comfy chairs to chill out in. Through these curtains, we have the sleeping area. Top bunks are for the children and the bottoms are for the toddlers. The fairy lights and the sheer curtains really make this room look like a dreamy place for a nap. I don't even like naps, but I might consider it if I was in this room. That back nook is for the babies to sleep in. We can't actually take babies to community lots, but once we get the infant update, you should be able to bring infants here. So you could swap out those bassinets for a crib after the update to make this lot functional for infants too. The last building in the toddler section is their snack room. The yellow and teal color scheme in here is so bright and cheery. It'll probably be easiest to have your toddlers eat at the bear chairs over there, but I did include a couple of high chairs if you'd rather use those for your toddlers or your infants. Above the high chairs, I put one of those parenting boards and a star decal to maybe be like a little good behavior tracker. And once they earn enough stars, they can pick a treat from that jar up there. Moving down the walkway over to the kids section, the first building we have back here is the playroom for child age sims. Over on the right is the puppet show area, then at the back is the arts and crafts area. I sized down these aprons to look like maybe the kids wear these while they're making their crafts to reduce the mess that they're making on their clothes. Then over on this side is their mini science station. Alright, let's go on to the next stop, the bathroom. Over here is the pretend changing station, which is just a couple of counters with a size down bench on top. You can also make a changing station using a dresser or a console table instead of the counters. I did this in the nursery I built for my Poly Family Craftsman Home video. I'll link it up here if you want to watch that one too. It is a really great family home that you may want in preparation for the new pack. The counters made more sense for this community lot bathroom though, so that's what I used here. At the back are the full-size toilet stalls and a bathtub. You know these kids are going to be getting dirty here, so a tub is essential. Then over here are the sinks with that little pretend step stool. All right, let's move on to the last building of this tour. 
The building at the end here is the kids' snack room. It's pretty much the same as the taller one. I just swapped out the tables and chairs and a few decor items. We've got more of a rainbow theme in here. I also added in these aprons and some herb pots and a step stool so that the kids can help prepare their snacks and clean up. There's a few shelves over here for the kids to store their jackets and lunch boxes too. On the walkway out here, we have another music area. This time it's for violin practice, which is great. You can come here and have your kids practice that and you don't have to listen to that awful music on your home lot. There's also a game table here. This is the last item I used that was outside my self-imposed pack restrictions. I honestly thought that the Don't Wake the Llama table was base game, but it's actually from Get Together. This table seemed more appropriate for a daycare than a card table, and the colors match better, so I kept this one. You could definitely replace it with a base game card table if you don't have that pack though. This is the playground for the older kids. They have this awesome pirate ship, some swings, and monkey bars out here. There are a few planters out here too, so the kids can practice gardening and harvesting stuff for snack time. Between the buildings, I tucked away some hidden spots for the adults. To meet the requirements for a park lot, I had to include some patio tables and a chess table. So I made this little picnic slash break area here for the daycare workers or parents to chill out at. I also put some skill building objects in these areas so your older sims can have some things to do too. Back here is a woodworking table for example. Then on this other side, we have a painting area and a flower arranging station with a few more planters too. All right, that's the whole lot. This Little Sprouts daycare build is definitely geared towards toddlers and kids, but I made sure to include plenty of things for your older sims to do here too. So this is a really great spot for an outing with the whole family. I know so many of us are excited for new family gameplay, but not all of us are gonna be able to buy the new Growing Together expansion pack. So hopefully putting this lot in your game helps you scratch that same itch without spending extra money or feeling left out. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, send a like my way. I have plenty more builds coming, so if you wanna see more, be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Remember, be kind to yourself today and I'll see you next time.